These students traveled to Taos, New Mexico over spring break for an off the grid class. Taj Work enrolled in the course after seeing a flyer posted for the class. I've never experienced a class in college that was like this. Like we have study abroad, but this is this is something new. And I think to everyone else too. Over the week, students lived in and toured earth ships in the Taos community. Earth ships are sustainable homes made of recycled materials. Tires packed with dirt and aluminum cans connected with cement form the structure of the homes. Glass bottles are used in construction for design elements, such as in stairs and walls. Zena Colshorn has been living in her earth home for many years, which her two sons constructed for her. It's a pleasure to show off. <laughs> And they are boast they didn't spend one dollar on me. It was all brothers and sisters and mother and wow. friends on the weekend. And it's a house built of remnants. Remnants of broken tiles or when my son finished the house for a client. You can just use your imagination and let it go in a place yes. like this. And she's one of the coolest women I've ever met. met. <laughs> I would love to come back and live here for three months with her. The houses are beautiful and creative in design, but they are also completely off the grid. Julia Griffey co-taught the course for the first time. So I'm digressing. So what does that mean? So you're not tied into anything. So basically, you, if you live off the grid, that means that you are can live anywhere. You don't have to worry about there being sewer tie-ins. Um, you don't have to worry about water tie-ins. You're collecting your own water. You're dealing with your own sewage. Um, you're collecting your own power. And you're living in a way where you don't need any any kind of um, additional heating source. Neil Peterson said the trip ended up being more than he had expectations for. Buy yourself a piece of land and build yourself a house. And don't need the government. Don't need, you know, any of those, any of those other tie downs that modern society uh, encumbers us with. For the Webster University Journal, this is Haley Luke. So I'll stop sharing. Oh, I'm stopped sharing. That gives you a sense of um, kind of what we do. Oh, wait, am I still playing some YouTube You guys, stuff? today I'm gonna to show you how to dress up. <laughs> Patio, and oh, dare geez. I say, add some home layout. Turn off your audio. I know, <laughs> my, uh... I'm going to do it using these planners. Uh, the embarrassing next videos that show up on my YouTube feed. So, uh, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Wide, so they give a lot of stability. Oh. Um, I can talk about, like, so Julie and I have been teaching this class now for uh almost i don't know seven or eight years or something and um uh, i live out here in taos uh new mexico and i built my own house i'm an architect um so we have uh kind of a lot of details about uh these specific off the grid houses that the students get a lot of access to um primarily one of the best pieces of this um program is that uh, it's hybrid, so you learn um, in the first five weeks in, you know, wherever you are, and then you come out here for a whole week and you get to live off the grid. Um, and we end up having really cool housing experience. So um, a lot of our students have in the past not paid too much attention to where they were going to go and they thought they were going to live like in a, in a little like mole hole out in the middle of the desert with no amenities, but they end up living in a really beautiful custom home that is actually off the grid. Um, so, so it's this kind of learning by immersion. And then we, we kind of cram, cram the week uh, full of some, a lot of really interesting experts. Um, so we get, um, we've had the, the president of the local uh, or the CEO of the local electric utility give lectures about um, how the grid works. 
We have experts that have been doing solar electric systems for the past you know, 30 years, giving exact demonstrations of how this, these systems work. It's really the, the experts in the field and kind of the cutting edge um, uh, kind of experience that is unique out here, I'd say, to a lot of other parts of the world. So that's one of the things that the students really, really like is having that hands-on experience. Um, and Taos, New Mexico is really beautiful. And so it's a, uh, you saw a lot of in that video, we, on top of just like these kinds of the, the lectures that we do and the field trips, we end up hiking quite a bit and, and getting down into the Rio Grande. Um, that was the natural hot springs adjacent to the Rio Grande that those guys were swimming in. And um, so it's a lot of outdoor activities as well. What kind of questions do you think that um, prospective students might have about the class? Yeah, I think, um, can you answer maybe um, students as far as like course prerequisites that are none, but like um, what types of skills do students need to have or, or knowledge do students need to have or, or not have? Or what do you think um, maybe students that don't have a lot of background in sustainability studies related issues, but might just be interested in it. What um, have you seen students like that get out of it? We, we don't have any um, prerequisites. And what's actually really cool about our course is we have it coded for GCP. So you earn physical natural world credit as well as social systems, human behavior skill. So, um, and it's also coded towards a minor in sustainability. So um, no prereqs, but does do a lot for you in terms of fulfilling requirements. We, we've had a really interesting um, assortment of students that have taken the class over the past bunch of years in that um, we're kind of, we're quite flexible about what the final project is. And so um, what, I find really interesting is the students are able to tailor their final project to what they what interests them. So sometimes that's a technical, you know, like looking at a technical aspect of living um, sustainably. Uh, a lot of times it's related to food, and you know, sometimes uh, students want to interview all the different community members that we've met and kind of follow up with some of that. Um, we've had people create really fantastic um, videos. Uh, we've had them do kind of a, almost like a PDF, like, you know, image document. We're fairly flexible and want to support the students in, in really um, gaining more um, details about what they are specifically interested in. Um, so I think that tends to be a benefit. Oftentimes we don't know what the outcome's going to be, you know, with the group. And then you get to really know each other um, when you're living in an off the grid situation in the middle of New Mexico for a week. <laughs> so. um, one, one of the things that we do the five weeks prior to the trip, the, the name of the class is on the grid, off the grid. So in the first five weeks before they travel, all of the education, all of the lessons are about on the grid systems. And the reason why we do that is we wanna give some comparison. Like, what do we even mean by on the grid? How does the grid work? How is electricity made in like normal houses and how does it get to a normal house? And so then once they get out to New Mexico, they can see the difference. Like, oh, I see <laughs> no power lines here, <laughs> you know? Um, so that's how we structured the class and it revolves around power, water, wastewater, and thermal comfort. Those are the four areas um, that makes that makes off, off the grid living different from on the grid living. <laughs>